One thing people keep asking me to talk about on this channel is anime movies, and while I'd be lying if I claim to be any kind of expert in the genre, well, I do have a few favourites that I'd be happy to talk about. And for me, one of the best has to be Castle in the Sky, the 1986 classic from the Japanese animation powerhouse Studio Ghibli. It's just an awesome, charming, heartwarming kind of film that seamlessly blends together magic, adventure, friendship, giant airships and awesome steampunk aesthetics into an epic, dreamlike fantasy world that you can absolutely lose yourself in for a good couple of hours. I know I have. The movie follows a young orphan boy named Patsu who ekes out a living in a small mining town that looks like it came straight out of 19th century England. In fact, the studio actually sent their artists halfway around the world on a research trip to rural Wales in preparation for this movie so they could understand the architecture and landscape of the place. And I just love the idea of a bunch of Japanese anime experts mooching around some Welsh village in the middle of nowhere with no fucking clue of what was going on. <laughs> Anyway, Patsu's life changes forever when a girl named Shita literally falls right into his life, drifting down out of the sky like she weighs no more than a feather. When she wakes up the next morning, she spins him a story about falling from an airship after it got attacked by sky pirates, but she can't remember much beyond that, or why the fall didn't kill her. Patsu, on the other hand, suspects that the amulet she's wearing might have a connection to Laputa, a legendary floating city that his father briefly spotted years earlier, only to get ridiculed and discredited when he returned home. Patsu's become obsessed with clearing his father's name, and plans to build his own aircraft so he can discover Laputa for himself. Anyway, it turns out that Shita's a wanted fugitive. Not only is she being pursued by a gang of ruthless sky pirates that want to get their hands on the amulet she's wearing, but pretty soon they're also being tracked by a group of shady government agents led by the enigmatic Muska that have even bigger plans for her. With enemies closing in on all sides, the two of them are forced to go on the run together. As the movie progresses, the two protagonists get into various scrapes and gradually learn more about each other. Patsu's theory about Shita's connection to the castle in the sky soon gets proven correct, and Muska's dark intentions eventually threaten the entire world. There's high-speed chases and action scenes, unexpected alliances, daring rescues and intriguing revelations. And of course, it all culminates in a final epic confrontation in the ancient floating city of Laputa. There's just something incredibly charming and rewatchable about this movie, from the hand-drawn animation that you absolutely wouldn't see from the big western studios anymore, to the quirky visual gags, to the dreamlike visuals, and the characters that are just bursting with personality. Everything about this just works perfectly, and knowing how much time and effort had to go into making a traditional animated movie like this, it's just so damn satisfying to watch. I've always been a fan of the steampunk style, so this movie was perfect for me. There's sprawling industrial towns, derelict factories, armoured trains, gigantic airships and towering fortresses. This is a world that feels kind of tired and worn down, its natural resources depleted by overproduction, and most of its wealth funneled into a bloated military that exists because it can, rather than because it should. And it's such a weird contrast when you see this kind of early 20th century technology running headfirst into magical floating cities and powerful robotic guardians, but somehow it works. And damn, look at this thing. How can you not love a movie that has shit like this in it? The characters are all great fun, and sometimes they go in pretty unexpected directions. Patsu is your typical plucky young hero with a heart of gold, brave and determined but also rash and impulsive. He's willing to risk his life for a girl he barely knows, and frequently tries to take on opponents that are much bigger and stronger than he is. Throughout the story, he's given opportunities to walk away, and even gets offered a hefty bribe to forget what he knows, but he can never quite bring himself to do it. He cares about Shita, and knows he's caught up in something far bigger than himself. Shita herself is a great counterpart to Patsu. She's quiet, reserved, and wise beyond her years. Coming from a sheltered background, she doesn't have much experience of the world, and at first defers to the adults who want to control her. But gradually she comes into her own over the course of the movie, growing in confidence and assertiveness. And by the end, she's come to accept and understand the power she's inherited. 
But my Man of the Match award in this case has got to go to a woman. Dola is the leader of the Sky Pirates hunting for Sheeta's amulet, and at first it would be easy to dismiss her as a greedy, selfish opportunist. But as the story progresses, you get to see deeper layers to her character, and realise that behind the aggressive facade, she's actually a pretty decent person. I also love that she's old as fuck, but she absolutely doesn't care. She'll happily throw herself into every fight, and always leads from the front with absolutely zero fear. <laughs> Absolute legend. Overall, Castle in the Sky is the kind of movie that feels like it was made with real love and passion for the source material, and it shines through in every aspect of the production. As I said before, it's got this strange dreamlike quality that you can really lose yourself in, delivering striking visual scenes, memorable characters, and a story that grips you right from the first scene and doesn't let go until the epic finale. I've been deliberately vague about the plot here because honestly, I think this is a film you need to experience for yourself. And if you're interested in getting into the works of one of Japan's most beloved animation studios, I really can't think of a better place to start. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.